Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and I hope you're doing well. If you are new here, feel free to subscribe to my channel and make it grow and spread the word. And after watching this video, if you find it useful, make sure you give me a like and use the comment section below to give me any feedback or any comments you like to make. And in today's video, I thought I cover on how to install plugins for your DAW on the Linux platform. So as I'm learning and as I'm trying to understand how things work on the Linux world, and I thought I'll share this information. But having said that, I am by no means Linux expert. I'm a, I'm, I'm a noob, you could call that, not a nerd. But I thought I'll share this information because that's one of the things that you want to do if you want to get into uh, sort of Linux and you set up your DAW, you want to have some plugins there. So you, maybe your favorite plugin, if it's available on Linux platform, or new things you want to try. As I mentioned, I'm not an expert, so if you do find anything wrong in any of the steps, uh, feel free to use the comment section below to let me know so that I can correct myself in the future. Now, even though in this video I'm gonna demonstrate commercially available plugins, on the Linux platform, it's nowhere sponsored. No one sponsors me, except myself. So uh, the commercial plugins that I'm gonna to demonstrate today are from OpenSound and specifically uh, Graalion that I typically use. And this, uh, pretty much all of the plugins from uh, OpenSound do support Linux platform. So that's why I decided to use that. And recently I've been looking at Audio Assault Mix Locker. Let's, uh, let me scroll up. So this is another developer that supports Linux um, as well as Windows and uh, Mac OS and does come with a free rack that includes several plugins, very similar to IK Multimedia's uh, Mixbox. I know I should not reference that because Audio Assault is a, a thing for themselves. Of course, IK Multimedia, it only runs on Windows and Mac, not on Linux. So this is a great opportunity to try these plugins for free. It comes with a gate, a reverb, delay, a black compressor, which is like 1176 style compressor, DSR chorus, a red compressor, which is a soft pick compressor they mention, where you can make it look like LA-2A-ish. And it's got a graphic equalizer, parametric equalizer, which is five band with um, high shelf and low shelf, as well as high pass and low pass filters. So quite useful for simple basic use. And they look great as well. And they sound great. I have tested them. And we're going to have a look at them in a very few minutes. Yes, of course, there are many uh, plugins available out there, even for free. For Linux platform, you can uh, find it on uh, KVR websites um, and a few others. And if you know of any that uh, I should have a look at and review, maybe, you know, let me know in the comment section below. If I get the time, I will definitely like to test them on the Linux platform. So without any further delay, let me show you how to install LV2 as well as VST3 and Clap format plugins. Another reason I've actually chosen Open Sound as well as Audio Assault is that you can just click free download, free edition, download it. There's no registration, there's no emails, nothing. You just download the file and it's ready to go. So let's have a look my downloaded folder. Okay, here's my download folder. I've downloaded Grelian and Mixlocker. It's a zip file in this case. It could be archive file as well, depending from which you know developer you're downloading. And then double clicking it usually will open up the default extractor here. I can extract and I've already done that and it's right here. So I've got the Linux, I'm gonna double click and open up. So I've got three different versions, VST3, LV2 and Clap uh, Edition. And next, if we go back up, Mix Locker, we have LV2, VST3 and some data. And now how to install all of this is pretty much uh, available on this text. You can uh, virtually read that. Okay. 
which I'm not going to go through that because that's something you can do in your own time. So where do we place these uh, files once we downloaded and extracted them? That is the question that I ask. And after a um, bit of research, I sort of worked it out where they go and how your DAW, and in my case, I'm just going to use Reaper to discover them so we can use them in our projects. So where do we copy these files? Let's try Grelion 3. I'm just going to double click to open it up under Linux. And here we have the three different versions. Now, you might want to ask why I have three different versions like VST3, LV2, and CLAP. You know, do you really need all three of them? Possibly not. I mean, I can understand with uh, VST3 being the latest edition of the VST standard. LV2, I guess uh, it's from, for Linux. CLAP is again available on all platforms. So, which one would you go? Well, Pick one. So I'm just going to choose all three to demonstrate in this video. But technically, I think you maybe only need one. Just choose one that you like. If one of them doesn't work, then you can try the other um, uh, format. So, uh, so where do these go? Well, they go into three different folders in your home directory. One is created for as .vst3. Another one as .lv2, and a third one as .clap. So if we go into our home directory, so this is sort of where all, all your files are. Um, now you may, uh, it will go on here, but you may not see the files that you want to see because they are hidden. Okay, so in my case, and I'm using KDE Neon here um, with KDE Plasma version 6. Point something, 6.3. So if I click here and select show hidden files, here I'm going to be able to see these hidden files which are sort of like faded out. Now, as you can see on the screen, there are no .vst3 or .lv2 or .clap folders. That is fine, so don't get confused. I'm just going to right click and say create a new folder. And here I'm going to try .vst3. Now it is warning me that anything that starts with dot is a hidden folder. So I'm going to say, okay, that's fine. And next I'm going to create another one. In most cases, you probably only need to create one of them. But for this example, I'm going to create dot lv2. Click OK. And another hidden one there. And lastly, let's create the last one. Again, is dot clap. Yeah, um, I don't know why they call it clap, but that's it's that's what it's called. Okay, so we go back into our uh, where we extracted, and in this case, the VST three. Let's open it up, and this is the file that we need. The dot ds three folder is what we need to do. So I'm just going to right click and say copy. Go back to my home. And that's the VST3 into the VST3 folder. And let's paste it here. And let's go back into LV2 folder and .lv2 folder of Auburn Sounds. Again, I'm just going to copy that. Um, and let's just go back into LV2 and paste it here. And finally, the clap folder. It's actually a file. So I'm just going to right click, copy that file, and into .clap folder, and paste one file here. And so we complete copying and installing the three different formats of the same plugin into our system. Okay, under CLAP, LV2, and VST3. So as I mentioned, if these folders, hidden folders, don't exist, you just need to create them. So next, let me open up Reaper, and we'll have a look if it's going to detect it, and load up the plugin. Okay, so let's go. Reaper. 
And yes, Studio One version 7 does work, but I'm just going to demonstrate with Reaper. Okay, so let's go into the options and preferences. And down here, as we can see, let me just bring it up. VST, that's the folder that it's going to look at. That uh, tilde, which is the swiggly line, slash dot VST3. Let's rescan. And I believe it found. Yep. And then the next one is LV2. As you can see, the last one there, that's the folder that we added. And the same with the clap. And it's right there. Okay. Uh, so two plugins scanned already. Zero failed, 12 presets, and so on. One plugin loaded as well. So automatically scanned those folders. So if it doesn't if it doesn't see it, you can always rescan it again. Looks like it's all good. Okay. That's the folder that you need to install it under. So let's give it a try. I'm just gonna double click, create a track, and let's um add effects. Now here we go. VSD3, there's Grelian, LV2, there's Grelian, and a mono one. And under clap, we can see we've got Grelian as well. All the new plugins, VSD3 and clap, and LV2 is right there as well. So let's give them a try. Uh, VSD3, Grelian, let's just, what am I doing? Add, and there we are. It's as a VSD3 version. So let's remove, let's try the next one, which is LV2. And there's LV2 edition. And you can read it at the top there. And let's try the last one, which is clap, format, and that works as well. So easy as that. So now we have a plugin that we can use in our project. And that's how you, easy it is to actually install a plugin, in my case, for the plugins that I've downloaded and tried to install. There may be other plugins which may require a different way of doing it, but this is the simplest way to just copy the files and the folders into the appropriate folders. And Reaper or any other DAW should be able to find those plugins and be able to use them in your project. Just to demonstrate how MixLocker works, I've only copied the VST3 folder into the .vst3 folder of my home directory and rescanning in Reaper. Okay, and there we go. Let's see if we go add under VST3 and now we have MixLocker as well. So let's double click and open that. And this is Mix Locker Rack. I'm not going to go into the detail. It's free, so you can download and have a look at it. But just to show you how it works. So we've got, you know, basically here six and can be extended up to, I think, eight. Yep, eight rack units. So we click and if we select the base pack, this gives us all of the free ones because they do have paid versions as well, where it says demo. But if we click just base pack, the free version, we only see the free plugins. Of course, if you do like them, do support them and you can purchase the other um, available uh, plugins. So let's select Black Comp. That's Black Compressor. Next, let's say we want to add um, a, a parametric EQ, three band plus uh, high shelf and low shelf. And then we can add after that maybe a red compressor, you know, like a soft compressor. And after that, maybe a deesser. And let's add a reverb. And after the reverb, maybe um, a delay. So that's all the rack units. And they all work fine. I have tested them. This sounds great. There is definitely room for improvement as far as the um, UI and uh, how it actually works. But, you know, it, it's, it's free, so can't complain, can't complain. And if you want to remove, of course, let me just say you can move them around um, and re sort of any which way you like. And if you want to sort of get rid of one, let's say you don't want delay, you double click on the X 
and that disappears. Double click on that one and that disappears. And you can just move them around as well, however you like. Um, and each one of them actually has, uh, you know, built-in volume level feeding from one output to the other one. Input level, output level, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go through that. Anyway, that's it. That's a demonstration of how you can have third-party plugins, commercial ones on Linux in your DAW. Hopefully, this will help you to decide and make the effort to move into Linux operating system and move away from Microsoft. Maybe, maybe not. Let me know in your comment section. Are you thinking of moving to Linux? Uh, will whatever is available on the Linux platform as far as plugins and uh, instruments and the available DAWs, is this something you are thinking of moving to or giving a try? Give it a try. Got not much to lose. You know, most of the things are free, so you can give them a try. So if you found this video helpful, make sure you give me the thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio, guys.